Hi, my name is Hilary Kunchum Sung, and I'm an ethnomusicologist with 25 years of experience researching and teaching about Korean music. Today, we're going to explore a form of processional music called Tejita. This genre was central to court culture. Tejita can be likened to marching in band music, and instead of supporting a specific sports team or a school, it supports and heightens the authority of the court. So it's very, very important in terms of Korean history, but also in today's Korea and outside of Korea, it has a really strong symbolic connection to that history. So the purpose of Tejita is to loudly announce the presence of important people, like, hey, somebody really important is coming down the street, pay attention. But it's also used to mark the beginning of important events, as well as to accompany marching soldiers, sort of as a morale booster. Uh, being quiet in battle is kind of a new thing uh, in history. Uh, a long time ago, England and many different uh, countries and cultures when they were at war tended to play music um, or have drumming accompanying uh, the fighting. So this is something that's also fairly common cross-culturally. <laughs> when you hear the unmistakable strains of Tejita, you know to direct your attention to whatever or whoever is crossing your path. So Dejita is preserved in the National Intangible Asset System. It's number 46, Important Intangible Cultural Asset. Um, and it's usually clumped together with classical PD, known as PD Chongak. Um, but today we're only going to be talking about Dejita. Tejita means great blowing and striking ensemble. Chui means to blow and ta means to hit. And it derives from the processional music go chi, uh, which means blowing and striking, uh, which accompanied the movement of kings and dignitaries beginning in late Chosen. The difference between chuita and tejita is really the number of instruments in the ensemble and of course the number of performers. The presentation of the ensemble is very, very formal and clearly demonstrates the formality and hierarchies of court culture. But since Korea is a democracy now and the court is no longer the center of government, you may wonder if Tejita is performed in Korea these days. The answer is that it is. Um, and there are many opportunities, both surprising and unsurprising, to see and hear Tejita performed. So one of the surprising ones, and this kind of caught me off guard fairly recently, but it's really, really exciting. And it's also a major boost uh, to the understanding uh, of and exposure to Tejita in and beyond Korea. Um, this has been uh, August D's uh, video. Um, he's also known as Shuga from BTS. <laughs> he has a song called Tejita. Um, and in the video, you hear Tejita performed clearly in the beginning of the song. Uh, and it underscores the position of the artist as king or as somebody who has a right to the throne. As the song progresses, we hear rural percussion rhythms on the small gong. And throughout, we hear the familiar strains of the conical reed instrument known as the taepyong sol. This particular instrument plays this really wild and memorable melody that's associated with the genre tejita. Uh, when August D's rap begins, he makes it clear uh, that the use of Dejita as a reference is not by accident. It's a very intentional reference. And it's meant to support his claim of royal rank in the song. You know, the lyrics go, Dejita, Dejita, play it louder, Dejita, glitter, glitter, look at my, my crown, glitter. So I'm not much of a rapper, but you get the idea. So a lot of this is represent representing, right? So he's representing... Um, his authority as uh, an important person, as somebody who can stake this claim. And the sounds of Tejita and this reference actually really supports that. So it's kind of a, it's really clever and really cool way to use this bit of history in a contemporary hip hop song. In contemporary Korea, you can see this music performed regularly during reenactments of guard changing ceremonies at palaces such as Doksugung and Gyeongbokgung. Uh, and because of its military history, uh, Tejita is still under the service of the Korean government. Um, it's in a special unit of traditional guards in the Republic of Korea's army. 
Uh, in fact, some of my students, my former students, have actually played um, in these kinds of ensembles. Um, one of the grandest occasions that uh, where you can see Techita performed annually is the processional preceding uh, the Royal Ancestral Shrine Ritual. This is known as Chongmyo Teche. Uh, and this happens on the first Sunday of every May. Historically, it happened at least four times a year because this is Chesa. This is like honoring the ancestors, but it's like a huge production. So doing it once a year is kind of enough. Um, this, this ceremony is actually the first, um, or the Chongyo Cheriak, the music for this ceremony is actually the first number one uh, intangible cultural asset. Um, so it's very, very important. And it's part of the carrying of the ancestors to the Chongyo Shrine you have uh, the parade of royal ancestors to the Chongyo shrine. Of course, this is all very symbolic, but Tejita plays a very, very important part in announcing the, uh, the, the procession itself, but also the arrival of the ancestors from Chongbok Palace, uh, which was the residence of the royal family during Chosen, which is 1392 to 1910, um, to the shrine. So during this procession, the streets are closed to traffic um, and people wear period costumes. And as they process to Chongmyo, they ride on horses and uh, carry palanquins. It's quite dramatic and it's a really cool sight. If you ever get a chance to go to Korea, definitely, definitely, definitely check out Chongmyo Teche. Um, so again, Teche Ta is performed. And so you here you have, it's kind of like if you've seen Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, not the same kind of meaning behind this at all. But for Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, you have all these high schools representing and they're playing their marching band in this parade. Well, in uh, this particular procession from Chongmyo, I mean, sorry, from Hyungbuk Palace to Chongmyo Shrine, you have a whole bunch of different high school ensembles and uh, local ensembles performing and representing their organization in this particular event. So it's very cool and it's fun to see how this is applied in contemporary Korea. So Tejita is also sometimes used to accompany uh, contemporary events that are in honor of foreign dignitaries and to mark special occasions. So we're going to focus on three key points uh, as we watch uh, the video of the Tejita performance today. So the first one is, what is the meaning of the costume? So the first point I want to focus on in connection to what the performers are wearing um, is the color. So the color of the clothing is yellow with a royal uh, blue belt tied around the waist. Um, and as you may recall um, from the introduction to Choyongmu, the video that was released a few weeks ago, yellow is symbolic of the center. And therefore, historically, the central seat of government was the royal family. So this yellow color is highly symbolic of royalty and of the central power uh, in Korea as it developed in the early part of the Chosun dynasty. Um, while different Hejita ensembles sported different colors historically, and some of these were representative of different regions and different ranks, the color yellow uh, took on new significance in the 19th century because it represented the imperial family and armed forces. So some of you might know that at the end of the 19th century, Korea uh, transitioned from a kingdom uh, or just a dynasty based in a kingdom to an empire. So um, that color yellow became really, really powerful at that particular time. Um, since then, the representative color of Dejita has been yellow. And I think a lot of that has to do with the more recent history of its symbolic significance. Um, the hats are militaristic. Um, they are very characteristic of the hats worn by military police during the Chosen Dynasty. If you see any historical dramas or um, any movies that are um, focusing on aspects of Korean history, you'll notice that the military police will wear hats just like that. So um, it is, again, a symbol of military strength uh, and power. Uh, and because Tejita is technically a military marching band, the reference to military costumes makes sense. Um, another point that we would want to pay attention to is the structure of the performance. How is it structured would be the question that you would ask. Um, the performance begins and ends with a call from the leader of the ensemble. Um, this particular person is called the Chipsa. 
Um, Chipsa is a generic term for a leader of any ensemble performance at court. Um, when the Chipsa calls out a particular phrase, the musicians know, oh, we have to begin. So this phrase, you'll hear it, is you know, which is kind of like, hey, strike the large gong and begin the jita. Guys, get started. Um, and it's a command to begin. And that's when the music officially begins. You'll hear a tak tak on uh, the side of the drum and then bam, everybody starts playing. Um, often the performers will respond to the call um, with a formal yay kind of response. Uh, to the call of let's begin uh, before they actually start making sound on their instrument. Um, another call takes place at the end of the performance when the performance is about to wrap up. The chips uh, again will signal um, with the following, I guess, word you could call it, uh, which actually has a lot of different meaning into it, which is which means stop the music, you know, guys, cut it out. So again, um, this particular individual marks the beginning and the end of the performance with a very, very formal, uh, very, very strict sounding, very forceful sounding calls to begin and then to end. The third point that we might want to pay attention to connects to the instruments themselves. Um, so what are the names of the instruments in the ensemble and what are their roles? So the ensemble consists of wind and brass instrumentation. Uh, which produce single sustained pitches, but also a distinct melody. And these are accompanied together by a steady percussive pulse. So the sound is really militaristic, right? Uh, in a tejita ensemble, each instrument is represented typically in threes. Um, the nagak uh, is that seashell looking instrument. It's made of a large spiral shell that we call a conch, right? Uh, and it makes a rich yet quite muted, muted sound. So it sounds really muffled. Uh, the sound itself is quite full and steady, um, and it provides a really soft alternative to the brassy sound of the naba. The naba is a trumpet type instrument, that really long one that you can see um, being held. Um, it has a really, really long body. Uh, the body itself measures about 120 centimeters in length. Uh, for Deji Ta, the Nabal is decorated with a flag, which emphasizes the formality of the performance. And it's played only with the right hand. So you'll see the instrumentalist holding it up when they play the long sustained pitches and then they'll put it back down. And only it goes up and down with just the right hand in motion. There aren't any holes on the Nabal, uh, so the instrumentalist will play only one sustained pitch. Um, but the nabal itself can sound several pitches. Um, this is made possible by shortening the actual length of the neck of the instrument, but also lengthening the neck. It's kind of like, it's not the same, but it's similar to how you would create a sound on the trombone by lengthening it and then shortening um, the actual mechanism for producing sound. Um, so the nabal sustained uh, note that it plays alternates with that of the nagak. Um, and its tone color contrasts with the nagak as well. It's a very bright and jarring uh, tone color or sound quality uh, in comparison. The Taepyeongso plays the melody that we hear. Um, so that's like the main kind of really kind of wild sounding melody. It really jumps around quite a bit. And you have all three Taepyeongso playing the melody in tandem. The sound is really loud, <laughs> very, very loud and majestic. And actually you'll see the Taepyeong so played indoors um, these days on stage, but uh, you know, the Taepyeong so is actually really well suited to playing outside, um, for example, in uh, processions uh, for which Dejita is suited. The Taepyeong so is typically referred to as a conical oboe. Uh, because uh, it has a tapered body, so it kind of starts out kind of skinny around the mouthpiece, and then it kind of gets a little bit wider, and then there's a brass cone that opens at the end of the instrument, which really helps to project the sound. Um, and the reed, there's a reed, which is kind of similar to what you would have on, say, a clarinet or an oboe or a bassoon, if you're familiar with those instruments. They use a reed, uh, so that sound quality is actually really nasal, uh, so that's what gives the tapium so it's really unique nasal sounds. And so when the player blows through that reed, it creates that really kind of that nasal tone quality that we find so distinct uh, for that instrument. 
Uh, the percussion instruments uh, in the ensemble include a large gong, which is known as the ching, uh, the yongo, barrel drum, which is the dragon drum, and the chabara uh, cymbals. Uh, the yongo is performed in a really, really highly stylized way. You're going to notice um, that the performers have these long sleeves um, that actually cover the drumstick. And then they'll strike the drum and they'll drop the padded stick in the air and lower their arm as they prepare to hit the drum with the alternate stick. So it's really, really kind of cool to watch. Um, and there's, there's another instrument as well that I might as well mention. So um, again, sometimes these days you're going to see Te Chita performed as a display, you know, on the stage. And usually that's the performers kind of in a semicircle facing the audience, similar to what uh, you'll see in the video today. Um, but when it's marching, you typically have the uh, inclusion of another instrument. This instrument is known as the ula. Uh, the ula is a set of chimes or small tuned gongs that are set in a wooden frame. There are 10 of them. Um, and the player of the ula plays a really, really simple melody underneath that of the te pyong so. Um, of course, again, in stationary versions of Te Chuita performance, you don't really see the ula. You'll only see it in outdoor processional types of performances. Um, so overall, the performance is quite loud, uh, quite formal, and quite powerful. So without further ado, let's watch this video. So have you been wanting to learn more about Te Chuita since seeing Augusty's video? A lot of people have. Um, so I really hope this has helped. Now sit back and enjoy this performance of Royal Processional Music, Te Chita. Thank you. Yungumira, Te Chita!